Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to continue our journey on hacking brain pain challenge and uh, today it's all about analyzing the brain pain executable and crashing the process to see where the vulnerability is located. Let's get started. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com. There you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you. It should give you a great start. All right, I'm going to use the web browser to download uh, the binary on my Windows box and um, use Ghidra to statically analyze the binary. So download it and run Ghidra. It's taking quite some time. There's nothing frustrating than to stay uh, waiting for the program to start. No, I don't want any tips. Um, so what I'm going to do is load the uh, file. Um, we do that with file, import file and just choose the correct file. All right, it's uh, confirming that it's indeed a Windows PE executable file. Everything looks fine. And just double click on it and we should start debugging or start inspecting the binary. Yes, we want to analyze it. Choose just the default analyze. Okay, now it's been analyzed. The first thing I like to do um, is go to the functions and maybe look for main, because that's where our logic would be. Um, we have two main here. The first one is doing some kind of loop. Mm -hmm. What about the second one? This one seems longer. Yeah, we, we recognize some strengths from here. Welcome to Brain Pain, enter the password, password uh, access denied, granted. So these are stored in local variables here and the local... Oh, okay, so we the, the port is 9999, which obviously confirms that most probably the uh, the same binary is running on host on the remote host on port 9999 initializing windsocket done so this this binary seems to launch a um, socket that listens on port 9999 and if we connect to it we have bind one, bind done on port again i'm just uh, inferring from the messages obviously we need to inspect the code to uh, to be 100% sure connection received and check is there's a number here get reply if that output of get reply is zero then we do a bunch of things and otherwise we do something else and if uh, the socket doesn't initiate, then we uh, have a, an error when socket init failed. So from a general, let's say an initial point of view, the logic would be inside this while loop. And since we only have one if else here, this is where the logic of the authentication rely is located, I guess and it's based on the output of the function get reply which is then um, tested here for zero or not um, so i wonder what this get reply function is so if we double click on it we get the into the function and as you can see here we have the uh, assembly And in the right, we have the reconstructed source code. 
So we get printf get reply as equals. This is the parameter that we pass to the get reply. I assume this is the password. And then we copy this param1 into local 20c using the function str copy, but without any length whatsoever. So this is um, potentially vulnerable to a buffer overflow because we could insert as many characters as we want and there is no check whatsoever. So we read the length of this um, local variable which holds our parameter and then um, we copy um, we it says here that it, the the bytes have been copied from the buffer which means parameter one has been properly copied I mean the value of the password has been copied into the local variable which holds uh, about which holds exactly 400 and 20 characters and then it there is a comparison with this password that we've inputted with the string <laughs> storm so yeah that confirms that this was indeed the password and this also confirms that this is the logic that performs authentication so we can just uh, rename this function and Give it a new name, like login. Perfect. So we have a lead about um, where we can trigger a crash. So if for some reason we uh, we use a password that is longer than six hundred than five hundred and twenty, then we might crash the service. Now to be able to validate this theory, we need to run our script so let's do that so i'm going to cd into downloads and run brainpen.exe we recognize some of the strings we saw in ghidra bind done on port 9999 and waiting for connections so now from a from our kali machine i'm just going to connect um, actually, uh, I'm going to use a local Ubuntu machine. I'm going to put it side by side so that you guys can see the interaction with the local service. So now we have the service running on 9999. And what I'm going to do is netcat into this time. It would be localhost on port 9999. Okay. So we get the same prompt as on the remote host and we get received connection string here. All right, let's type admin. It says here copied six bytes because that's the length of our input. One, two, three, four, five, and then null byte in C to terminate a string. Now if we type uh, something else, seems that we get out of the while loop. I'm not sure why, but here it says check is minus one. But if we type the right password, if I could type, um, we get check equals zero, which means the login function that we've inspected earlier is returning indeed zero. So what happens if we try to send like a long string, like 521, what would happen? Uh, actually, let's use uh, Python to do that. So, do we ha do I have Python here? Yes. Um, okay, uh, we're going to do it like this. Python, right? Dash C for inline code, and then we, we're going to pipe whatever output we have here into our service. So, I'm going to start with a small string, and then we going to build upon that. So I'm going to send a bunch of A's like 500 times. Okay. So hit enter. Um, well, I need to actually print that. Uh, print 
Mm. Print that string, please. So that's the uh, command that's going to be run. And then the string would be passed to localhost 9999. So it says here, access denied. And uh, we still have the service running, okay? Now, what happens if I send 600 characters or 600 string long? So it says here, got 601 bytes to buffer and then immediately the process exits, which means there is some kind of crash. Okay, so this is promising for us because we know that we have an input, which is the password that is controlled by us, we, and that we can use that to affect the availability of the service. But we want to do more than that. We want to get remote code execution on the machine using this vulnerability. And this is exactly what we're going to do in the next episode. Stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that ring bell to be notified when the next video is live.